what's up, guys? On this week's episode, we're going to go more in detail with who is the bride of Christ? Is it the church or is it New Jerusalem? We're going to go further in detail today here on Last Things Podcast. Coming to you once again with another episode of the Last Things Podcast, where we are on a journey to truth. It is indeed an honor and a privilege to come before you once again as we discuss the Word of God. How is everybody doing on today? Thank you guys so. I got some of my eye. Thank you guys so much for tuning in with me this week's episode. Of course, we got a banger of an episode. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it, man, because as I tell y'all all the time, this podcast would be nothing if it was not for you guys. So I want to tell you guys from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys so much. I truly do appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I know we're supposed to go into, we're supposed to finish up Revelation chapter 21, where we're talking about New Jerusalem, but I started listening to the episode last week and, you know, after I, after I listened to that, I felt like I really didn't do a good enough job explaining, um, the bride as far as is the bride, the church or is the bride new Jerusalem? So what I want to do is I want to, let's just say this is an interlude episode. Okay. This is an in-between episode because I want to go more into detail about the bride and I want you, and I want to explain why we say the bride is the church, why the bride is not new Jerusalem. The bride is not New Jerusalem. The bride is the church, okay? It's not New Jerusalem. New Jerusalem is just where the bride lives. She lives in New Jerusalem. New Jerusalem is not the bride. It is the church, okay? So what I want to do is I want to use this particular episode to break, to go more in depth with that because I know I, I didn't feel like I did a good enough job explaining it. So we're gonna so we're gonna spend this episode explaining the differences between the two as to why the bride is the church and not New Jerusalem. Okay. So um let's do this. Let's go to Ephesians chapter five. Let's go to Ephesians chapter five. Very popular scripture. This is very popular. And we're gonna scroll down to verse 25. Okay. So this is what it says. We're going we're gonna to go from 25 to 32, okay? So verse 25 says this, for husbands, this means love your wives just as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her. You see that right there in verse 26, in verse 25, he tells husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for who? For her. Who are we talking about? The church. How does how is the church described as a her? Verse 26, to make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word. Notice how the church is described as a her. He said, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her. So in essence, he's also telling husbands, give up your lives for your wife. OK, now let's keep going. Verse 27. He did this to present her to himself as a glorious church without a spot or wrinkle or any other blemish. Instead, she will be holy and without and without fault. So we see here verse 27. She as a glorious church, she will he did this to present her to himself as a glorious church. You see that? 
So church is described as a her without a spot or wrinkle or any other blemish. Now, I want to stop right here. This right here tells you the church cannot have any spot or wrinkle or blemish, right? There are a lot of people who believe the woman in Revelation chapter 12 is the church. The woman in Revelation 12 is not the church. The woman in Revelation 12 is Israel because she's pregnant. Who is she pregnant with? She's pregnant with Christ. If the church was pregnant before she got married, to, before, Christ, before she marries Christ, we have a very big problem. OK, so the woman in Revelation chapter 12 is not the church. If you want to if if you're hearing this for the first time and you want to um, go more in depth with Revelation chapter 12, go back to episode 42 and episode 43. That's where we'll go in depth with who the woman is and who's the and it'll go. It, it'll go more in depth. OK, but I'm just giving a brief little overview for those who in case we have new listeners who are listening for the first time. OK. So we know. So Revelation chapter 12 is not the church. That woman is Israel. OK. Now, let's keep going. Uh, verse 28. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as they love their own bodies. For a man who loves his wife actually shows love for himself. No one hates his own body, but feeds and cares for it, just as Christ cares for the church. You see that for a man who loves his wife actually shows love for himself. No one hates his own body, but feeds who hates his own body, but feeds and cares for it. Just as Christ cares for the church and we are members of his body. Verse 31, as the scriptures say, a man leave his father and mother and is joined to his wife and the two are united as one. This is a great mystery, but it is an illustration to the way Christ and the church are one. Notice what it said. A man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife and the two are united as one. So we see if the man is represented by Christ, he leaves his father. Who's his father? God himself. And he leaves his mother. Who's his mother? Mary. And he's joined to his wife and the who's his wife? The church and the two are united as one. This is a great mystery, but it is an illustration of the way Christ and the church are one. You see that? So again, I say each man must love his wife as he loves himself and the wife must respect her husband. So we see that we see how Paul is saying it, 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 here in Ephesians. We see how the church is talked about as the bride. The church is the bride, how the how the how husbands are supposed to treat their wives and how he correlates it to how Christ treats the church. The church is the bride. We see that this is the very popular. This is where we get this is this is the scripture that we use when we talk about the church being the bride of Christ. OK, now I'm going to show you a couple of other ones as well to bet to show you that the church is the bride. OK. I want you to go uh, to Revelation chapter 20. Let's go to 2 Corinthians, okay? Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11, and we're going to go to verse 2. I, I read this last week. So this is what it says, For I am jealous for you with the jealousy of God himself. I promised you as a pure bride to one husband, Christ so see here, we're seeing it here in 2 Corinthians. Paul, again, correlates the church as the bride to Christ, the husband. We see that again. So, again, the church is being called who? The bride. Who's the husband? Christ. OK, so we see it again here. Right now. Um. I want to I'm going to come back to Revelation 19. OK, let's go to New Jerusalem. OK, let's look. Let's look at New Jerusalem. So what I want to do is let's go back to Revelation chapter 21. OK, I want to show you some things about New Jerusalem that's not talked about. Let's show you some things about New Jerusalem. OK, let's go to verse two. Look at what it says. Revelation chapter 21, verse two. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, come down from God out of heaven like a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. Now, I want you to pay attention to something. Now, if you read in the King James, it'll say adorned as a, it'll say 
in King James, they'll say instead of like a bride, it'll say adorn like a bride. Now, the definition for adorn is to enhance the appearance of, especially with beautiful objects. That's the definition of adorn, right? But we see here in the New Living Translation, it says heaven like a bride. Do you see something here? It says here, she comes down, the holy city, New Jerusalem, comes down from God out of heaven like a bride. We saw in Ephesians how Paul kept calling the church the bride. But we see here in Revelation 21, John is saying New Jerusalem looks like a bride. Not called a bride. Not called a bride, okay? New Jerusalem's not called a bride here. Now, so let's scroll down to uh, verse 9. Same chapter. We're just going to move down to verse 9. This is what it says. Then one of the seven angels who held the seven bowls containing the seven last plagues came to me. Come with me. I will show you the bride, the wife of the lamb. Now, here's going to get interesting. OK, so verse 10. So he took me in the spirit. Hmm. Same thing. that We've heard that phrase before. Right. So he took me in the spirit to a great high mountain and he showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. You see that? So John was taken in the spirit. And he was shown the holy city, Jerusalem. He saw the city, Jerusalem, right? Look at what it said. He was shown the holy city, Jerusalem. Now, here's the thing. Look at verse nine. This is where verse nine, this is where it gets a lot of people in trouble. He said, come with me. I will show you the bride, the wife of the lamb. And John said he was taken in the spirit to Jerusalem. Okay. So. This is where people say, well, see, this is where this is the bride. This is the bride right now. I, I want let's let's do this. Let's keep reading. Let's read. Let's keep going. OK, because I want to uh, I'm going somewhere with this. OK, let's look at verse 11. It's shown shine, which is past tense for shine with the glory of God and sparkled like a precious stone, like Jasper, as clear as crystal. Verse 12, the city wall was broad and high with 12 gates guarded by 12 angels. And the names of the 12 tribes of Israel were written on the gates. There were three gates on each side, east, north, south, and west. Verse 14, the wall of the city had 12 foundation stones, and on them were written the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Now, we're going to come back to all of that, the meaning. We're going to break that all down next week as we pick up Revelation uh, 21 again, okay? Now, what I just read is how New Jerusalem is described, right? Notice what... For people who say, OK, this is the bride, because verse nine says he's shown he was shown the bride. So people saying New Jerusalem is the bride. Right. This is this is my rebuttal to their statement. I want you to go to Revelation chapter 19. Now we're going to come back to it. Let's look at verse seven. Revelation 19, verse seven. This is what it says. Let us be glad and rejoice and let us give honor to him for the time has come for the wedding feast of the lamb and his bride has prepared herself. Verse eight is it, here. It is verse eight. She has been given the finest of pure white linen to wear for the white linen represents the good deeds of God's holy people. Verse nine. And the angel said to me, write this. Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding feast of the lamb. And he added, these are true words that come from God. Look at verse eight. Look at verse eight. She's been given what? The finest of pure white linen to wear. Who, who's the she? The bride. The bride is given white linen to wear. For white linen represents the good deeds of God's holy people. The bride is going to be wearing white linen. When we read the description of New Jerusalem, did you see anywhere in anywhere in New Jerusalem's description where you saw white linen? And, and look and look what the white linen represents, the good deeds of God's holy people. Did when we just when they read the description of New Jerusalem, did you see anything there about white linen being attached to New Jerusalem? No, you did not. 
But here in Revelation 19, it says she's going to be wearing white linen. So New Jerusalem cannot be the bride. Why? Because she's not because New Jerusalem is not wearing white linen. Just as the scriptures say, and this is going to be the final. This is my final um, piece of evidence to show you that New Jerusalem is not the bride. OK, N one, she's not wearing New Jerusalem's not wearing a uh, white linen as she's supposed to. Two, she's looks like a bride, but not called a bride like the church is. And here's number three. I want you to skip skip ahead to Revelation chapter 22. And I want you to go down to verse 17. Let me pull up on my laptop real quick. Revelation 22. And I want you to go down to verse 17. Let's read it. The spirit and the bride say, come, let anyone who hears this say, come, let anyone who is thirsty, say, let anyone who is thirsty, come. Let anyone who drink, who desires drink freely from the water of life. Look at how verse 17 start. Verse 17 starts in Revelation chapter 22. The spirit and who and the bride, the spirit and the bride both say. Who's talking? The spirit and the bride. The bride is speaking. In Reve the bride is speaking right here in this verse. Does New Jerusalem look like it speak? Does a city speak? The, the people in the city speak, but the city itself does not speak because why? It's an inanimate object. So when they say, I'm going to show when we went back to Revelation chapter 21 and John and this angel tells John, I'm showing you the bride. New Jerusalem is not the bride. He's taking them to the city where the bride is. The bride lives in New Jerusalem. However, New Jerusalem, the city itself, is not the bride. It's the, the bride is the people living inside of New Jerusalem. Okay? As I said last week, New Jerusalem is not the bride. It's just the city where the bride lives. The bride is living somewhere, living in living in New Jerusalem. That's why the angels say, I'm going to take you to the bride. The city is not the bride. The people in the city are the bride. The city is just where the bride lives. That's where the bride lives. The bride lives in New Jerusalem. However, the church is is the bride. The church has always been the bride of Christ. It's not New Jerusalem. New Jerusalem is just where the bride will live. And did you notice, like I said, when we read New Jerusalem's description in Revelation chapter 21, did you see anything about white linen? But Revelation 19, the marriage supper of the lamb says the bride was given what? White linen. And what did the white linen represent? The good deeds of God's holy people. You didn't see anything in New Jerusalem. When we were describing New Jerusalem, you didn't see anything about white linen. And notice what God and notice the angel tells John, write these words down for they are faithful and true. He's saying you can bank on it. This is true. So if the bride in Revelation 19 is wearing white linen, then why is not she wearing white linen now? In Revelation 21. If New Jerusalem, the city is the bride. So I wanted to do this little short video because I wanted for people to know New Jerusalem is just the bride is I'm sorry. It's the city where the bride lives. It's not the bride itself. The bride itself is the people who live in the city. It's the people in the city, not the city. It's the people inside. The bride is where she lives. And also, I want you to notice something else, too, about the people. We're going to see further ahead in Revelation where it talks about how um, nothing unrighteous can get inside of the city. Why? Because the because Christ is protecting his bride. Nothing unrighteous can get in to affect her, to hurt her, to bother her in any way, shape, form or fashion. We'll see it again. I think it's in I think it's further along in Revelation 21. So we'll see it next week.
But I want to make that, like I said, I wanted to make this short episode to show you New Jerusalem is not the bride of Christ. The bride of Christ is always has and always will be the church. When the angel says, I'll show you the bride, he took John, the angel took John in the spirit to New Jerusalem. New Jerusalem is just the city where the bride lives. However, it's not the bride. The bride is the people that live in the city. OK, so I hope this this like I said, this is going to be this is a short episode. But I hope hopefully this will um will get you guys hopefully to see. Hopefully I did a better job this time explaining that New Jerusalem is not the bride. The bride is the church. New Jerusalem is just where the bride lives for three reasons. One, we don't see anything about, as I said, the church is described as a bride, described as a bride. But New Jerusalem was described look, looking like a bride, but not called a bride like the church was. We also saw in Revelation 19 that the bride, that, that the bride will be wearing white linen. And we know what the white, white linen represents, the good deeds of God's people. New Jerusalem is not described as having any kind of white linen. We don't see that at all. And and the angel tells John, this is ba this is good and true. You can bank on this. This is true. So that means we should have been seeing white linen if, the, if New Jerusalem was the bride. We didn't see that. And then finally, in Revelation 22, we see the spirit and the bride are both speaking. Does New Jerusalem speak? No, we don't see New Jerusalem speak. New Jerusalem is an inanimate object because it's a city. The bride is the people that live in the city. OK, so I hope I did a good enough job to explain the differences between the two, um, the differences between the two and why the church is the bride, not New Jerusalem. New Jerusalem is just where the, where the people live. OK, so that's it for this uh, interlude of an episode. Um, let's do this. I want to, while we're sitting here talking about new Jerusalem and, and the bride and white linen representing the, um, good deeds of God's holy people. This is a perfect segue for for our call to salvation, as I call it, because we want to make sure that if anything, um, if anything happened, we want to make sure that, um, that your salvation is secure. Man, you know, I last yesterday I was watching this Nicolas Cage movie called Knowing. I had always wanted to see it, but I never saw that movie. Yesterday was the first time I saw the movie, right? So as I'm sitting down watching it, I kind of see what happens. And, you know, in case you've never seen it, seen the end, I'm about to spoil it. In the end, there's a solar flare that comes to destroy the earth, right? So Nicolas Cage's dad was a pastor. So that last, so the last few minutes. Nicholas Cage, after he dropped his son off, I'm not spoiling everything, but he dropped his son off. You got to watch the movie to understand what I'm telling you. He dropped his son off and then he went to go see his dad. So as they all hugged and embraced, the solar flare came and that's where everyone was killed. Everyone was killed. Sorry about that. Fix my headphones, man. Everybody was killed and the uh, earth was destroyed. Right. But in the process, the the guy was his his dad, who was a pastor. He was like this in essence, saying he was comfortable about it. Like this is not this ain't the end. This is this is just the beginning because he knew he had the afterlife. He knew, man, I got no, nah, I'm not worried. I'm not worried. My physical body is going to die, but I'm about to spend eternity with the father. I ain't got nothing to worry about. And that's what and that's why we want to make sure when you give your life to the Lord, I want you to realize it's not an easy task. It's not easy because you might have more trials than you did before. But also know that God laid laid his life down. Christ laid his life down for you. God said, if I gave my only begotten son, what more won't what, what more else won't I do? He said, there's one I have given my life. I've gave my son's life for you. There's nothing that I won't do for you. That's how much God loves you. Could you imagine giving your only son for somebody, for a complete stranger to save their life? You couldn't do that. But God said, I love y'all that much. I'll do it. 
And Christ willingly laid his life down. He told Peter when they showed up to arrest him, Peter cut off the soldier's ear and he said, man, no, put your sword away. He said, don't you know, if I wanted to, I could have legions of angels come and save me. But he said, no, nah, I got to do this. I got to do this. So there's nothing that Christ won't do, man. Yeah, it gets hard at times, but but that's where you got to some some things happen in our lives and we wonder why, why, why. And sometimes it's just like, no, it's, it's, it's happening because I got enough, I got a better way. But you got to trust me. Trust me. I know what I'm doing. I got this. Trust me and follow me. And I trust me and follow me. I'll make you fishes of men. Your latter will be great. Your latter days will be greater than the former days. That much I can tell. I will tell you that right now. Yeah, you might have some trouble, but I promise you, you won't be in it by yourself. That's why the Bible said, when my mother and my father have forsaken me, Christ said, I'll never leave. Christ said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And he's not a man that he shall lie. If he said it, he's bound by his word to do it. Amen. So this is what I want you to do for me. I want you to just bow your heads. If you going through, if you got a lot of things in your life and you're going through, you just looking for a way out. You looking for things to get better. You feeling down. You feeling you life has got you down. You on your last, you on your last leg. You just don't know what else to do. You, you, you just, you just asking like, I just need a way. I just need a way of what to do. This is your way. This is how you get you. This is, this is, this is the first step. To a to a new life, he that's in Christ is a old is a new creature. Old things pass away, and behold, all things are made new. This is the first step to a new life, and I promise you this: what you're going through now, this time next year, it won't look nothing like it does right now. I, I'm not even gonna say next year. It could be six months from now. It could be a month from now. But don't give your life to him because you won't because you coming in thinking he's going to change everything right off the back. It may take some time. I, it could take time. But I promise you, you're going to look back at this and you're going to be like, man, I cannot believe I did that. And man, my life has just taken off in ways I would have never expected. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to bow your heads, pray the simple prayer. Lord Jesus, I confess that I am a sinner in need of a savior. I ask you, Lord, come into my heart. Make me, shape me, and mold me into the person who you've called me to be. I lay my life down for you. My life is now in your hands. Do with me as you wish. In the mighty name of Lord Jesus, I pray and thank you. Amen. We're going to believe that if you pray that simple prayer, you have transferred over from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. And we believe now that your name is now written in the Lamb's book of life. And if your time comes tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, or the rapture takes place, you're going to spend eternity with the Father. For now you're going to be like the thief on the cross. He told the thief on the cross, this day you're going to spend eternity with me. That's what's going to happen with you. You're going to spend eternity with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Welcome home, my brother and sister. Now, I will say this. Pray and ask God to send you to the right church. Pray and ask God to lead you and guide you to the church that he wants you to go. Because everything that says church in this day and age is not church. Amen. Amen. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode. As I said, this one was going to be a short one because I really want to go more in depth with um, the bride and, and uh, the church in New Jerusalem. OK, so next week we're going to pick up with uh, we're going to pick up Revelation chapter 21. No, we're not going to do that. You know what? This is what I want to do next week. I want to do a review. Um. You guys have heard me talk about the movie Left Behind, right, with Kirk Cameron. It's an older movie, Left Behind. Well, they did a remake of Left Behind. It's called Left Behind, Rise of the Antichrist, and it stars Kevin Sorbo. If any of you are my age, when you say Kevin Sorbo, we know who Kevin Sorbo is. He played Hercules in the, in the TV series Hercules the Legendary Journeys back in the day. He was Hercules. And uh, so... He's got I don't know who I don't know who he's playing, but he's starring in the movie. And Neil, I think his last name is McDonald. He played Damian Dark in the Arrowverse uh series in in uh 
in Arrow, The Flash, the whole CW Arrowverse series, Damian Dark, he's actually in there and he's playing the Antichrist. That dude is always playing the, a villain, but God dog, he does a good job, man. But anyway, he's playing the Antichrist in the movie, right? Now, that movie comes out next next weekend however here's the kicker it's only going to be in theaters for three days i believe next friday saturday and sunday what happens afterwards i don't know but it's only going to be in theaters for three days go see that movie because what i'm going to do is i'm going to i'm going to i'm planning on going to see that movie and i'm going to do a review of that movie next weekend and what, what we're going to do is we're going to see the um, we're going to review the movie and we're going to line it up and we're going to see what parts explain what parts are right and what parts are wrong in the movie when it comes to the end time, because, you know, it, it's always going to be off. So the question is, what parts are right? about the movie and what parts could be wrong about the movie. Okay. But go see that movie next week, man, that, you know what, that's a good family movie for everybody to go see. In fact, I would dare, I'm going to take it a step further. If you're a pastor listening to this, that's the perfect movie to, for the whole church family to go do. If y'all, if y'all, if the whole church family want to get together and do something, that's one good thing right there. Everybody go see that movie. Cause I plan on going to see it. If you want to just a general idea of the end times of how the end times will unfold go see that movie left behind again it's called left behind rise of the antichrist that's the name of the movie and it comes out on theaters next third next friday saturday and sunday it's only going to be in theaters for those three days okay after those three days that's it it's not going to be in theaters anymore what happens after that i don't know but Go see that movie. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a review of the movie. Um, It's going to probably be some spoilers in it. So if you haven't seen it, you might. I'm going to put a title in the, in the uh, video. Hey, it's going to have some spoilers if you haven't seen it. But go see the movie, okay? I think it's going to be a very good movie, uh, a good family movie for the family to go see. Spend a night in the Word, man. You can't go wrong with that. Amen. Amen. Guys, I love you. You guys have a blessed week. Please be safe out there. Remember what I always say. Pray uh, the Lord's Prayer with you and your family and pray the armor of God prayer before you and your family leave out of the house in the morning to keep you guys safe from the tricks of the enemy. OK, love you guys. You guys have a blessed week. Be safe out there. And I'll see you here next week with another episode of the Last Things podcast where we are on a journey to truth. Love you guys. Be blessed.